Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Melissa Rich, and welcome to another episode of the Taking Care of Your Temple podcast. Today, we are going to talk about nurturing your soul, how nature reflects God's love for you. And this is really one of my favorite things to talk about, so I'm excited about this one. So let me introduce myself and tell you a little bit about this podcast in case this is your first time listening to it, and then we'll get to our topic. So the objective of this podcast is to help women connect with God regularly and use His grace, power, strength, might, wisdom, just all the things in order to help them improve their mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being, just all of the things. And there are four ways that, you know, I suggest that we do this, four um, principles, couldn't think of the word, that I suggest using that help you do this. The first one is to keep our focus on God. Y'all, there are so many distractions going on all around us, and keeping our focus on God can just be this, this balancing, juggling act where we are always striving to do it because we keep getting distracted. I know I do anyway. So, if you're feeling that way, you are normal. Congratulations. But you just have to keep pulling your focus back, pulling your focus back, and just keeping it centered on, you know, where He wants you to be. The next thing is to acknowledge that we are not enough on our own. This has gotten so much easier. I talk about this a lot as I've gotten older. When I was a lot younger, I just thought, I can do this. I don't need anybody's help. I'm fine. The older I've gotten, the more I realize that is so not true. So I have no problem whatsoever now asking God for direction, for guidance, for wisdom, for protection, for all the things, because I'm not enough to do it on my own. And He will give us those things if we ask for them. He won't, you know, inflict them on us, but we have to ask. Third principle, to remember it is about progress, not about perfection. Thank goodness, God does not expect us to be perfect. He wants us to keep getting better. We we need to be growing in Him. We don't, don't the Scripture talks about this. We shouldn't remain babies forever and and really be fed on baby food. We need to start growing and becoming stronger. God wants us to do that. The fourth thing is to work on consciously changing our thoughts. As a family therapist for twenty eight years, I can tell you our thoughts are incredibly important. The messages that we give to ourselves, they really determine how we think, feel, act, relate toward other people, everything. So if you are giving yourself a lot of negative, toxic messages, you need to really look at those and start changing the things that you are telling yourself because, y'all, those messages have power. Don't ever think that they don't. So just be aware of that. Okay, the verse for this podcast is one that I really like. It is 1 Corinthians 3.16. And what it says is, appropriately, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? I mean, I think we should all be aware of that. Sometimes it's easy to forget. Okay, before we get started on our topic, let me uh, say a brief prayer, and then we'll get going. Lord, I just thank you for giving me this platform, this opportunity. I ask your blessings on what I say and how I say it, and I ask that it will be a blessing to the people listening to this, that they really will be able to use this to help them move forward in their lives and grow closer to you. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Okay, so I need to say before I get started, I am recording this at home, not in my office. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see there's a different background, and the reason is because my car is in the shop. So, if you hear, and I hope you don't, barking in a little bit, it'll be my two dogs, um, but I've got to get this done. So, uh, I'm just hoping and praying that they will be very quiet for the next 40 or 45 minutes. Okay, so going outside and spending time outside in nature, in in God's creation, y'all, is so tremendously important. And especially in this country, we just don't do that very much. And There are good things that happen to us when we do spend time outside. There are bad things that happen to us when we don't spend time outside. So I want to go over some of these things. Here are some excuses that people give for not going outdoors. One is a lot of people just feel like they're too busy. I've got too much going on. I don't have time to go outside. And and it's true. We are all busy. We all have a lot of commitments, a lot of responsibilities. 
But I think if we think about spending time outdoors as a way to nurture and replenish ourselves, maybe we'll be more likely to do it. Maybe. Um, also weather. Unfavorable weather, too hot, too cold, rain, storms, all of those things can stop people from going outside. And some people just prefer the indoor kind of comfortable, even temperature to the changes of being outside. And y'all, I get that. I live in Texas. So we get weather extremes. It is really, really, really hot in the summer. I think this last summer uh, of 23, it got up to, I think, 104 a few times. That's pretty hot. Um, and then the the uh, it can also be very cold in the winter. You wouldn't think that in Texas. And it's not that often, thank you, Lord, but we have our moments. We have our days. And I do not like cold weather. One of the reasons I moved to Texas was because I wanted to be somewhere where it was warm all the time. And it's warmer than some places, but yeah, we still have our moments as well. So I get that. But it is something that you need to work through anyway. And I'll tell you how I do it in a little bit. Then there are technology distractions. Smartphones, computers, all these devices can keep us indoors because that's usually where we operate those devices. And that can reduce our time spent outside. And I think one of the things that I have seen for that that is helpful is to make that work for you. Listen to a podcast or an audiobook outside. Use a tracker, which I do all the time, to track your exercise, or use ear pods and talk on your smartphone while you're outside pulling weeds. You know, there are things that, that you can do with the technology if you really want to do that and still be outside. Or you could just unplug and enjoy being outside without people interrupting you or, or having to listen to things. I I find that especially when I run, I don't wear uh, the ear pods or listen to anything because I like the quiet. I love it. It's just nobody's talking to me. I can just run and think my thoughts or zone out. I love that. So that's another alternative. Another reason people say that they don't go outside is because they don't have any really outdoor interest or hobbies. There's nothing they really like to do outside. So why would they go? And I get that. Um, but, you know, we most of us, I think, are interested in our health. We want to feel good. We want to be healthy. And so sometimes in order for that to happen, we have to do things that maybe are not our favorite. We don't really hate them, but it's not like, ooh, I get to go brush my teeth. You know, we do it because we know that we need to, because we don't want to get a lot of cavities or anything. But is it our favorite thing that we get excited about? No, but we know we need to do it, so we do it anyway. So going outside can be that type of thing as well. Something else that can be valid is safety concerns, especially in urban areas. Um, you know, they they may not feel that outdoors is, is very safe. And as a single woman, I get that. There are places where I don't go at night or, or when it's just too dark in the morning. I have a little dog, Chewy. He is a uh, terrier mix. His favorite thing is going on walks. His very, in fact, I better not say that too loudly or he'll think that's what we're going to do. Um, but his favorite thing is to go for a W-A-L-K in the morning. And I have to kind of fight him to get him to wait until it's light outside. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. That's safer for me. I don't want to trip and, you know, fall in something. And sometimes there's loose dogs or cars that I don't see till the last minute. I want to be able to see clearly because it's safer. So I totally get that. I tend to wait until it's light and there's people around me. Um, if you, if that is a concern for you, you know, take your cell phone with you. Uh, run or walk with a large dog. My little dog would bark someone to death, uh, but he wouldn't probably be able to defend me much, or a partner or a group. Just take sensible precautions and still go outside. Another reason people give for not going outside is because they have physical health limitations. So if they have, sorry, if they have health limitations or disabilities, it can limit what they can do outside. And I get that. But again, find things that you can do and work within those limits. Y'all, we all have limits on things that we can do. None of us can do everything. We can all do some things better than others, and some things we just don't do well at all. Uh, math and I are on those terms. I do not do math very well, but I still have to do it sometimes. So I do the best I can. 
So figure out what you can do and work within those parameters. Another one is people say, well, I just don't live near anything. They're not, there's no proximity to anything outside. And that is also a valid one. Um, so one of the things that I try to do is find parks or tree filled neighborhoods that are accessible to you. I'm fortunate enough to live about midway between two parks. They're both about, one is about three or four minutes away in the car. The other is about five or six. So, I mean, really close. And they both have lots of trees and trails. And so that works out well. Um, I love uh, in Waco, we have something called Cameron Park that has a zoo and all these walking trails. And uh, it, it goes by a river. Uh, the Braz Is it the Brazos? I think it's the Brazos. Anyway, it's one of the rivers in Waco. I can't think of it right now because I'm talking about it. But um, it's it's beautiful. However, it's about 20 minutes away from me. So honestly, I don't go there very often unless I happen to be in that neighborhood anyway. And because th that's a 40 minute drive both ways. So I understand that, but find some other things around you. Another reason people don't go outside is because they just like indoor entertainment better. I mean, that's what they're used to. That's kind of what this generation especially has grown up with. I know y'all have heard this said, but you know, when I was growing up, we played outside. We didn't have the the TV and the video games and we just played outside until our parents would call us in for dinner. I mean, we'd be out there like all day. I mean, come in for lunch, but you know, that's what we would do. And kids nowadays, they just don't do that. It's, it's a different world, but we all need to make it a point to go outside periodically because natural light, fresh air and green plants, y'all, they are good for us. They help us be healthier. They really do. That's not just me saying that that is research supporting that. Sometimes it's just inertia or habit. People get very accustomed to an indoor sed sedentary lifestyle and they find it really hard to break those habits. Maybe they don't want to. They're comfortable with that. And I get it. Comfortable is a thing. I understand that. So if that's an issue for you, start small and work your way up into new healthier habits. Don't start out trying to spend a whole day outside. That's not a good thing. Go out for 20 or 30 minutes. You know, take your dog for a walk. They'll love it probably. Go weeding uh, in your front yard or whatever. Start out small, and then you can always add on. Some people have allergies or health concerns, which I totally get. Seasonal allergies can really make it tricky to be outside because you're sneezing your head off. Your eyes are watering. Um, during heavy allergy season, you may need to stay indoors or wear a mask outside. My late husband, Ed, had allergies really badly. And I remember this was way back before COVID. During allergy season, if he would mow, he was a dentist and he would bring some of those masks home that the uh, medical people wear. And he would wear one of those outside. So it would kind of filter some of the, the grass and the dust and the pollen out. So, you know, do what you can and check with your doctor to see if maybe you need to go on meds for allergies. Another reason is some people is fear of nature. Some people are really afraid of bugs, snakes. I'm not thrilled with that one myself. Um, just outdoor elements. And so they decide it's just easier and safer to stay indoors. So the answer for that one is, you know, don't go out in the middle of the country. Go to a park, maybe go with some friends. Don't go by yourself and start getting nature in small steps. I mean, your backyard, you're probably not going to have too many big, bad animals in your backyard. So that should be relatively safe. Or if you don't have a backyard, if you live in an apartment or a condo, go to a park. Those are pretty tame. You're getting trees and uh, sunlight and fresh air, but usually you're not getting too many things that you, you don't want to have exposure to. Then there can be cost concern. Some outdoor activities, hiking, camping, and travel can be expensive. And so I get that. Find some free things around you. Look for bike trails. Uh, try rollerblading, walking, running through neighborhoods or parks. All of those things can help you do the outside for with less fear. And then a big one that has been due to COVID is fear. Way too many people became afraid of leaving their homes during COVID. I mean, I saw this over and over. Um, I remember 
twice during COVID. Once during like, it was about, I don't know, two or three months into it. And then again, almost a year, they did this interview in Waco with these two women who lived together. And they talked about the fact that they were not leaving their home. And they were, they looked like they were in their 50s or 60s. And they had just decided for health, they were not leaving their home. So they did that a couple of months in. I thought, yeah, okay. Then again, like eight or 10 months later, they still had not left their home. And I was like, that's ridiculous. And they were saying, well, we don't want to get sick and we don't want to catch anything. And even though, yes, they were giving us all these precautions, they were also saying, it is good to get outside, go walk, go do something. And so my son and I would go out and walk our dogs every day. And, you know, we would make sure that we were good 20 or 30 feet away from anybody. If we saw people coming, we'd, you know, move over. So we we kept healthy, but we made sure that we got outside. So just be careful. All right, here are some things. So here are some problems or issues that can happen, bad things, from being inside too much. The first thing is you can really develop vitamin D deficiency, and this is lack of exposure to sunlight. You don't want so much sunlight that you develop melanoma or you know, you get really, really badly sunburned, but you do need some. It's healthy for you. It's crucial, in fact, for bone health and for immune function. So you need to get some. And one of the best ways to get it is by going outside. Then you get a sedentary lifestyle. And a sedentary lifestyle contributes to things like obesity, cardiovascular problems, muscular weakness. So if this is an issue for you, Y'all at least work out inside. I um, have a rebounder. I've talked about this before. It's a little round indoor trampoline. And some of them come with a, a bar for balance issues if you need it. But I use mine every day. I walk or run in front of my TV. And I have the remote in one hand. And I'm doing my arms while I'm running. And so I am getting a lot of exercise. I so far have... 9,805 steps for today. And I really haven't done that much. I usually get about 18,000. And a lot of it is inside. Uh, I do go outside, but I also get a lot inside. So at least try to work out some. Um, let's see, what else? Mental health issues. We saw a lot of this in COVID because of people staying home and isolating themselves. It uh, Too much Indoor living has been linked to mental health problems, including increased stress, anxiety, and depression. And as I said, anxiety skyrocketed during COVID. And a lot of it was because people were just staying home and were having no contact with anybody. We aren't made to be hermits, y'all. It's not healthy. Um, sleep disru disruptions. If you are staying inside and spending too much time in front of your TV or your computer, that light can disrupt your sleep because it's artificial light. So you really do need to go outside. It's helpful and get some natural light. It can help you sleep better and feel better. Same type of thing with too much uh, screen, eye strain and fatigue. And spending time outside goes a long way towards preventing those. And then there's lack of fresh air. I don't care how new your house is. Being inside with doors and windows closed, it can it can cause problems because you can get indoor pollutants and it can affect your respiratory health and your overall well-being. And there was something, I can't remember what it was, uh, what it was called exactly, like sick building syndrome or something that you can get from being inside too much. I mean, it, it's just not healthy. Um, let's see, social isolation. This can lead to feelings of loneliness and just feeling stressed. And social isolation can also lead to anxiety and or depression. And neither one of those are fun. Also, decreased productivity. I know if I have been working inside, and I do that a lot because I'm on my, on my computer a lot, I get to a point where I'm like, I have to take a break. I have to stop and I will get up and walk around inside the building, honestly, if it's really, really hot or really, really cold outside or or outside, just around the parking lot, just to to get myself outside. I kind of need to, to have that reset to make myself feel better. Also, problems from being indoors, you can, you can develop a weakened immune system. So 
that's not good because your your immune system is not going to respond well to any new types of pathogens it's exposed to. You can also develop something called nature deficit disorder. And this is lack of contact with nature. It is associated with decreased well-being and just with a disconnect from the outdoor environment. And I had never heard of this till a few years ago, y'all, but it is a real thing. And a lot of people have it now. We need to spend more time outside. I don't know how much more plainly I can say this. Increased stress levels. Being inside too much can really increase your stress levels. Um, talked about lack of different vitamins. Uh, posture issues. I don't know if y'all can, well, those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see that I'm sitting up pretty straight. But a lot of times when people are indoors, they are slouching all the time. It's not good for your posture. I also remember, showing my age here, when I was little, my mom would make me walk with a book on top of my head to teach me to stand up straight because you don't want the book to fall. To stand up straight, to walk evenly, and I still do that. I still have good posture because of that early training. But a lot of people who are watching TV all day or in front of the computer, they don't. So that's something to be aware of. Another issue can be reduced creativity and innovation. If we are inside all day, our thoughts can just get stuck and they stagnate. And we have trouble thinking of anything creative or, or interesting or new. We just don't do it. Impaired cognitive function, limited engagement with outdoor activities can actually hinder our cognitive function, including memory, attention, and problem-solving skills. Those decrease when we spend too much time indoors. You would not think that is the case, but it really is. And then obesity. We talked about that one. That can develop um, and impact on children's development. If children don't have enough time playing outside, it can affect their physical and cognitive development. So as you can see, there are a lot of issues, bad ones, that can happen from spending too much time indoors. The Bible addresses this. It tells us to go outside and enjoy nature. So here are some verses. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the earth, y'all. He meant for us to enjoy it. We need to do that. Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The trees proclaim the work of his hands. Pretty good. Psalm 104.24, I think that's supposed to be 20 and through 25. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. I mean, when you go outside, you can see all the birds and the flowers and rabbits. <laughs> Someone asked me the other day when they were walking past my house, is that your rabbit? There is a big white rabbit that I think was someone's pet rabbit and escaped. And it's been kind of circling around these three or four houses here, goes through everybody's backyard. I'm actually kind of surprised that um, a hawk hasn't found it because he makes a really good target. But there are so many things of God's creation that we can see when we go outside. They're not going to be in our living room. Uh, saw, uh, Job 12, 7 through 10. But ask the beast and they will teach you, the birds of the heavens and they will tell you, or the bushes of the earth and they will teach you and the fish of the sea will declare to you. God can use the outdoors to help us heal, to help us feel and function better, but we have to get out there. Romans 1, 20, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world, in the things that have been made. We see God through his creation. And we need to be aware of that. We need to see, oh yeah, this is what he did. Look at that. I love this one. Psalm 8, 3, and 4. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Waco is getting, well, I mean, the whole North America, but Waco especially is getting ready to be right in the center of a an eclipse, a really big one. Um, I forgot the date. I've got it on my calendar because I need to order glasses for it. But um, it's coming up and we are going to see, it's, it's like a one in hundred year type of event. And when we go out and look at all these things in nature, these cool things, 
we see God's handiwork. And it really makes us aware of what a great, creative, amazing God we have. Revelation 4, 11, just got a couple more. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. And by your will, they existed and were created. Again, God made everything, everything that is living, God made. And I love this one. Last one, Isaiah 55, 12. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Isn't that great? I love that. That was one of my mom's favorite verses. Okay, so let's look at some of the benefits. We've kind of talked about these a little bit, but some of the benefits that going outside can have for us. So some mental benefits. It's a huge stress reducer. How many of you have no stress? I see no hands going up. Yeah, we all have stress. And going outside is a great way to feel calmer, more relaxed, more comfortable, and at ease. It improves our concentration. When we come back inside, we're able to focus and concentrate more. It enhances our creativity. We are able to come up with better ideas because we get stale just sitting around inside. It also, going outside is a mood elevator. Sunlight and fresh air trigger the release of serotonin, which helps us feel happier. It's a natural mood enhancer. We feel happier and more relaxed when we spend time in nature versus staying inside all the time. Cognitive restoration. Nature provides a break from mental fatigue. Have you all ever done that? You are working so much and you've done it for so long that your brain is just fuzzy. You you can't literally think straight. I, I get that way. I've been there before. And again, if, if I spend too much time indoors with technology, I really can't think straight. And I certainly don't think very productively. Going outside, it's like a, a reset for my brain. It really is. And I feel better. Uh, it improves memory. It helps you with resilience so that you are more adaptable. You can deal with stressors better. It reduces mental fatigue. Again, it kind of has, kind of has a restorative effect. And it also helps with attention and mental focus. You can kind of improve those after you go spend some time outside. Some physical benefits. Okay, we talked about vitamin D synthesis. Sunlight is a natural source of vitamin D, which is essential for bone health and for immune system function. Also, increased physical activity. Most of us don't go outside and just sit down, although you could, you would still get some benefits from it. But most of us go outside and walk or do something, and that's good for our cardiovascular health and for fitness. Going outside, spending time outside helps us sleep better in the evening because that natural light that we're exposed to, it helps regulate our circadian rhythms. Talked about it boosts our immune system. It improves respiratory health. We breathe better. It really helps us with balance and coordination because outdoor activities, a lot of times you're going over uneven territory. And so you have to work on your balance and coordination. And y'all, our muscles were made to be used, not just to sit on a couch. That's not what God intended. He told me. You can trust me. Uh, joint health. Uh, when we're walking or hiking or moving around, it improves joint flexibility and overall joint health with weight management, obviously, because we're outside and we're burning calories. Better posture. It also enhances our cardiovascular endurance. God designed us to move, and we function better when we are outside moving. So some emotional benefits, increased happiness. Nature experiences are linked to higher levels of overall life satisfaction. Y'all, I always feel better when I spend time outside, whether I'm walking my dog, running, walking myself, or if I'm just out in my backyard. Even, you dog lovers will relate to this, if I am just outside doing my periodic poop pickup. I just have a little poop bag. I have a pair of disposable gloves on and I'm picking up poop and bagging it, but I'm walking all over the backyard because, you know, they go everywhere. And even just doing that for 15 or 20 minutes, what well, my yard looks better. 
and there's less hazards <laughs> in my grass. And two, I'm outside. And so I just feel better. My dogs love it. They're running around seeing what I'm doing. So it's good. Uh, stress relief, social connections, especially if you are doing uh, outdoor activities with other people, then you really do feel connected with them. And it's just more enjoyable. Have you ever seen kids just running around outside? I mean, my dogs do this too, just running around like crazy. And you're like, what is your deal? They're just happy to be outside and to be moving. They love that. Um, it also can help with, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with this, Seasonal Affective Disorder, SAD. This is uh, people who become, especially during winter, when, when there's less sunlight, the days are shorter, they uh, get depressed. And they may not do it the rest of the year, but during the winter, when, the, when the, there's not that much sunlight out, they really do become depressed. I've always believed that I have a bit of this. And because if I have two or three really gray overcast days in a row, I'm not very happy. And I've always thought I could never go to Alaska to live. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind visiting. It looks great. But those six months of winter, Y'all, I, I would have the screaming meanies. I just can't do it. And it's interesting. One of the ways that they treat uh, SAD is to ex get pe have people get a, a lamp that like reproduces outside light. Not as good, but it's better. And just getting that light in on you helps people feel better. So you could just go outside and do it. You don't have to buy a lamp. Just a thought. Some spiritual benefits of going outside. One is... It gives us a sense of purpose. We feel like we are connected to God's creation, and we're kind of plugging in to something bigger than ourselves, and we all need that. There is mindfulness and presence. When we are outside doing outdoor activities, we're, we're usually pretty present focused. We're thinking about what we're doing. We're enjoying the moment more, and yeah, and it shows, and we feel better. Being outside can promote reflection and contemplation. And we do not do this enough, let me just tell you. I know I certainly don't. Just sit around and just focus on our environment. This is one of the things I've thought about. I seriously have beach envy for anybody who lives within walking distance or really close to a beach because I love the beach. That's my happy place. Any beach, happy place. And I love the the rhythm of the waves coming in. I love walking on the sand, hearing the birds, the salt smell, all of it. It is just the best ever. And that's where I can reflect and contemplate. Sitting on a beach or walking on a beach, I, I kind of zen out. I mean, it, it's, yeah, I love it. And a lot, uh, there's a cultural and spiritual connection. A lot of cultures have spiritual practices that are tied to natural elements. And focusing on the beauty of God's creation, y'all, it's renew, renewing to our spirit. We just feel better, happier, more at peace, at ease. It also can give us renewed energy, which renews spiritual energy as well as physical. And that can kind of give us a fresh perspective on life. And being outside when we are surrounded by God's beautiful creation can really foster a feeling of gratitude. And gratitude, I know, is a big thing now in mental health. It's, it should be. And I think a lot of us, even though we are aware of it, we're not as mindful of all the things we should be grateful for as we should be. That sentence got convoluted, but you know what I'm saying. There are We are all so richly blessed, and a lot of times we just forget about that. And I think if we could all go outside and spend time outside and just whew, relax, be calm, just enjoy the moment, I think we would all feel a lot happier. And we also can feel really connected to the universe. If you've ever gone outside uh, if you live in out, out in the country, that you can do this. If you go outside at night and you see all the stars, and if you live in the city, you, you're not going to be able to see them because the lights of the city kind of block them out. But out in the country, you're like, wow, where, where did all these stars come from? They've always been there. We just haven't always seen them. But it's it's an awe-inspiring feeling. You kind of feel diminished and you realize how big 
God's creation is and how mighty God is by just looking up at all the things that he created. And again, we don't do that that often. Also, I love this one. Being outside can promote this feeling of an appreciation for the environment and a sense of responsibility. We need to take better care, I believe, of our planet. We're just not doing that great of a job. There are people in some places who are making an effort, and that's great. More of us need to do that. And I think being outside more, we can realize, okay, maybe I could do this to help, or maybe I should do less of this. Yeah. And then being outside can really, if we sit in the quiet and just listen and enjoy it, it really can enhance our intuition and inner wisdom. And I think that's because we can hear God better when it's quiet. There's not all the distractions. If we go outside and we're quiet and we're listening, it's easier to hear his voice. And that's a good thing. That is always such a good thing. So if you're like, okay, great. I know I should go outside. What the heck am I going to do when I get out there? I am so glad you asked because I have some activities to suggest. Okay, if you're going out by yourself, you can go hiking. Explore trails and look at scenery. And if you don't know where to walk, get on your trusty computer and do an online search for walking trails or running trails, whatever you want to do, near me. I promise you, some will come up. You can go walk. Running or jogging, same type of thing. You can Go out and enjoy the beauty of creation and work on getting in shape. Cycling. Ride bikes on bike paths or mountain trails. I love this one. Take a photography walk. I'd not even heard of this. But the object is to go outside and be walking along, but stop and take pictures of just the beauty of nature. You know, a flower that you see a really amazing, gnarly-looking tree, cloud formations. I have caught some really good uh, pictures of clouds where, I'm sure you've seen it, it's like there's a window in heaven and all the sunlight is just pouring down. It looks like God is reaching down through the clouds. I love that. Um, bird watching. Observe and identify different bird species. I was I was walking Chewy just this morning. We were coming home, and I kept hearing this really loud bird chirping or singing or whatever it was. And I'm looking around because you know it's it's February here in Texas, and a lot of the trees are pretty bare. And I finally saw it. I thought it was this whole flock. It was one little bird right up on the top of the tree, and he was singing his heart out. I was like, man, you're a whole choir, just one little bird. Uh, reading outside. Enjoy a good book surrounded by nature. You know, take a water bottle, take a comfortable chair, go to a park, sit under a tree, or if you don't want to get bird poop on, sit in a pavilion. <laughs> Just go somewhere and be outside. Um, solo camping. If you're brave and adventurous, go on a camping trip and go. That, that's I have to say, that's kind of not my thing, but for some people it is. Okay, for couples, Take a picnic. How cool is that? Share a meal together in a scenic outdoor location. Spread a blanket. Take some pillows. Take some food. And, you know, just go out and enjoy. And I think as a couple, especially if you do that type of thing, the focus is on each other. And you might even, I know this is really radical, y'all. So, you know, think about it. But you might even agree to turn your phones off when you do that. I know. It's out there. I get it but I think it could be helpful. Um, stargazing. I talked about that. Go outside and, and try. I, I never can identify any of the constellations. People will say, oh, that's the Big Dipper. And I'm like, okay, uh, if you say so. But again, I've never really lived somewhere where you can see the stars that clearly, so that's probably why. Canoeing or kayaking. Paddle together on a river or a lake. I have to say, just bring something up. If y'all have not seen the movie, The Boys in the Boat, so good. That was an excellent, excellent movie. Um, that kind of reminded me of it. But that's a good way as a couple to, you know, get out in nature. And sometimes you really do get out in nature because I've seen couples who are not rowing well together and they end up in the water instead of in the boat. But, you know, it's a, it's a shared experience. Couples yoga. 
practice yoga in a peaceful outdoor setting. I've seen yoga classes given on the beach. How cool is that? I do not do yoga because I am the most unflexible person in the world. I've never been able to touch my toes. I, I just can't do it. It looks great. It's just not my thing. Um, beach day. Okay, this is my thing. Relax by the beach, swim, or just take a romantic walk on the beach. Outdoor movie night. Set up a movie screening outside. It can be in your backyard. They have a lot of those outdoor movie, what do you call them, screens and projectors and all that, that you can do in your backyard. And you can just set it up and invite family and friends over and go to town. Go watch it. Uh, hot air balloon ride. This sounds really cool. This is on my bucket list to take a hot air balloon ride. I think it sounds like so much fun, but I think that would be a fun couple's activity. Very romantic and memorable. It's not something that you would do every day. This would be great for an anniversary or maybe a birthday gift to someone. <laughs> I think I've told you all this. When one of my brothers, Chris, turned, I think it was 50, one of his daughters gave him a uh, skydiving package. She went with him and I asked him late and, and they did the thing where there was someone with him and they took pictures and filmed it and all that. And so he did it. And I said later, how was it? And he goes, it was great. I'm so glad I did it. I will never do it again. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I get that. But it's an experience. It's something that, you know, you may never do again. So family activities like mom, dad, kids, everybody, a nature scavenger hunt, just create a list of items for the family to look for outside in your neighborhood or go to a park. Also, geocaching. That's really popular nowadays. And it's basically treasure hunting using GPS. And they have these little, what do they call them? They're little containers. And those are the caches. And they put them in different places and they give you clues and you look for them. And then if you find them, some of them, you can leave a note inside saying, you know, who you were and that you found it, leave a note for the next person. But it's a very cool, fun, outdoor activity for the whole family because you're walking and you're outside and, you know, it's just a fun thing. Another one is taking a fishing trip. I have to say, honestly, y'all, so not my thing. Uh, I think fishing and golf kind of rank right up there with their outside and that's great. For me, it's very high on the boring scale, but there are people who really love it. Great. Go for it. Camping, set up a family campsite and enjoy the great outdoors. When I was in high school, my dad was pastoring a church in Oklahoma and my mom's family was in California. So several times in the summer, we would drive from Oklahoma to California all the way across country. And back then, I had a big station wagon. I mean, that's what people did. And my dad, because... He had five kids. He put a, uh, a layer of, had it cut a layer of foam on the back part and we put the, the middle seat down. So we had this big area in the back. I, no one was wearing seat belts. I mean, we didn't back then. And we would play cards or, you know, do whatever and just lounge around in the back. We had so much fun. So much fun. Um, and then we also, at times, when we stopped, this is what I was headed for, we had this pop-up camper that we were pulling. So we'd have to put the pop-up camper up. And I tell y'all, my dad was a pastor. He, they, My parents had both been missionaries. The first few nights that we did it, I thought my dad was going to lose his religion because it is not that easy. And we kept trying to, you know, put pole A into slot B and, you know, do the stuff and we could not get it. Well, after... After like the second or third night, we got it. And we could get that thing up in like five minutes. Um, but it, it was just fun. And then we'd talk around the campfire. Take a bike ride. Explore bike trails together as a family. Now, obviously, you need to wait until your kids are old enough to ride to do this, or you can have them ride behind you. Outdoor sports, soccer, frisbee, other sports that you can play in the park. Nature crafts. I love this one because I'm a big crafter person. Create art using natural materials found outside, like leaves and pine cones and flowers. You can press flowers. Do some of that. And it, it, again, it, it really connects you and your kids to outdoors. Have a group hike. Hike, sorry. Organize a hiking trip with friends and family. So you can get two or three families all going together. And the kids can be running back and forth like crazy people. <laughs> The adults can be walking and talking at a reasonable pace. And it's just, it's fun. It's good for everybody. I think more people don't do this though, because 
Someone needs to organize it. Y'all, I am the world's best organizer. I will take charge. I will get things going. But there needs to be somebody to do that. So if you have that gift, do it. Because a lot of times people will participate in activities if someone else gets them going. And if you are natural at that, do it. That's a gift that God gave you. Use it. Uh, what else? Team building games like, I don't even know, uh, tug of war. Uh, there's a lot of team building trust activities, like with ropes courses and things that you can do. Those are all fun. A community cleanup. If you live in a community, maybe get your kids out there and you guys all go volunteer to clean up a park. That's a good thing. It's kind of a way of giving back. Um, I mentioned outdoor yoga class. A big thing nowadays is goat yoga. Not that fond of goats, not that fond of yoga. So honestly, not my thing, but I have to say it does look fun. I've watched people do it and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty fun, but I don't want the goat chewing my hair. But it would be a fun thing, especially kids tend to like it. Some type of a group cycling tour. Organize a route where you're going to go, take water bottles, take some food and go out. Um, oh, and apps. I think the best one that I've seen is Pokemon Go. I don't know that much about it, but it's one that it, it, this was especially popular during COVID. I would see people in the parks because it would take you, you have to go here and then you have to go over here. So you're getting outside and doing things. It was fun. Also, just some other things that you can do. Have a bonfire and cook out and tell stories, especially ghost stories. Always fun. Frisbee golf. Um, there's a lot of those Frisbee golf courses in Waco. People love it. Rock climbing. Be sure you have the right equipment for this and have someone there who knows what they're doing. Don't just, I don't recommend just trying this if you've never done it before on your own. Zip lining. When my husband passed away, gosh, it's almost 13 years now ago now, uh, I took my two sons who were, I think in high school and maybe college at the time, we went to Costa Rica. When my parents were missionaries, we spent a year in Costa Rica. They were in language school, learning how to speak Spanish. And it's just beautiful. If you all have never been, that is a great place to go to. So one of the things that we did is we went to a place that had zip lines. And so, and I did it. We're zip lining down, you know, the little trail. And I hear, mom, look at me. And it was my youngest son, Josh. I turned around. He is zip lining upside down like Spider-Man. And I'm like, oh. I did not go that far, but I did do the zip lines, and it was fun, I have to say. Uh, visit farms. Go to outdoor concerts or festivals. Just look for ways, y'all, to spend time outside and to get your family to spend time outside because it's just, it's good for everybody. It's healthy for everyone. Okay. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope this gave you some ideas on going outside because you need to do it. Let me close up with a few fun facts about Waco. I thought this was really funny. Waco, Texas, is the only radio station in the country whose call letters spell out the name of the city. W-A-C-O. Yeah. Also, some of you know Dr. Pepper was created in Waco, and I've talked about there's a Dr. Pepper museum there. There is no truth to the rumor that Dr. Pepper is made with prune juice. Y'all, growing up in high school, that was so prevalent. And I believed it after I, I'm not fond of Dr. Pepper. After I drink it a couple of times, I'm like, I totally believe it. It's not, it's not true. No prune juice, just so you know. Um, Darwin the gorilla is a giant statue of a gorilla on Austin Avenue in Waco. And he wears different outfits throughout the year honoring special holidays and events. It, they had to custom make those clothes for him because this is a big, big statue. He's big and bulked up. And sure enough, you drive past and he has different outfits on, you know, Christmas and I can, Baylor has a big game coming up. They'll have him in, you know, a Baylor uniform. So it's, it's kind of fun to see. And then there is a sculpture by famous Wacoan Robert Wilson called the Waco door. And it's installed here uh, at the art center in Waco. That thing y'all weighs six tons. It is humongous. I've seen it before. It is the most enormous door. I'm really not sure how anybody is able to open it because it is so big, but it's kind of cool. If you come to Waco, you need to see it. Okay. So I am closing up now. And 
For those of you who have not heard it before, along with this podcast and owning and operating Waco Hypnosis Center, I'm available for public speaking. If you are interested in finding out more about that, you can contact me through my website at www.drmelissarich.com, or you can email me at info at drmelissarich.com. So y'all, I hope this podcast was helpful. If you enjoyed it, leave me a review, share an episode, just tell everybody how amazing it was. That would be awesome. So everybody have a good day. Spend some time outside. Your body will thank you. Bye y'all.